Effective. This conference will now be recorded. Thank you very much for joining us for this demo. Uh, what we'd like to do today is review the new HHC uh, API application. Uh, with that, I'd also like to talk a bit about the other applications, the HHC Lite and HHC Basic. We'll do a bit of comparison of that. So we'll show you uh, the big demo will be HHC API. We'll talk about uh, the configurator as well, some comparison charts, and then we'll end with some commercial drivers as well. So as you know, we have three versions of HHC. We have HHC Lite, HHC API. So let's start, I'll just show you what the Lite looks like because what we have is, oh, we'll just slip by that one. Uh, all of our three builds, HHC API, Basic and Lite have the same uh, software, so the same builds. So all we've done is done feature gating. So here on your screen now is HHC Lite. So this is the one, the free one that we would love absolutely every single uh, handle or act user uh, to use, because it is free. It's basically a Rolodex on your phone. So contacts, uh, calendar, that type of thing. But uh, there's no two-way sync. So anything you do on here, you can call, you can email, you can SMS, but there's absolutely no connection back to um, the act. So if you try using it, like if you go to opportunities, I'll click on the bottom right-hand corner. It says HHC Lite. You know, if you want more, uh, try HHC API. So same thing for all of them. For calendar, uh, you get the same message all the way through. So it's basically just your contacts. You can email, SMS, uh, call them anything you want, uh, but it will not create any histories for you and ACT. So that was a quick uh, review of that one. Let's go back now. And can I'll I just go... jump in, can I just jump oh, sure. in quickly? Uh, just want to remind everyone, since this is a reseller webinar, that um, you know we're going to face a lot of challenges with renewals um, starting April with the, the price increase. And what we've done is we've tried to bring as many API products to the market so that you guys can use that as leverage um, to you know improve your retention. Handheld Contact Lite is a 100% free app and should be distributed to everyone. There's nothing in it for this is a community offering. We just want to help everyone uh, maintain as many uh, subscriptions as possible. So please evangelize this as much as you can. Um, we, there's literally no downside. Sorry, go ahead. Excellent, thank you. So first of all, uh, the big thing around this build was feature gap reduction. And so those of you that have used HTC Classic uh, were reticent to move to the API version because of the differences in the features. But with this, we've added now, now we have quoting, we have invoicing, mobile mapping, importing, exporting of calendars, searches, keyword searches, favorites, sharing, and contact copying, everything in this build. So to start with, let's open up Handle Contact API. Hello. You're popular, Vic? Yes. Um, can what? we just make sure people are muted there? Ken, if yeah, you can? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't see anyone that's on. Sure. Can we ask that everyone mute themselves? I can't see with these small icons who might be on. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. And so, uh, the job first location of all, is going to uh, be. Uh, Louise Wiederman. Louise. Louise. Name, it might not be in there. Here, let yeah, me just. Job address. address. Sorry, guys. That's using to be an opportunity field. Yeah, a lot of the stuff that they're. Okay, Louise is muted now. Thank you. Or I did that. So I guess thank okay. myself. <laughs> anyway, so here you see the dashboard in front of you. And so it looks a bit different as you, we have our contacts, opportunities, activities. And then we have a pop up menu now. And so, in that way, it, it's different than the other one where you had your settings as part of your dashboard. So, let me show you what it looks like. We have our favorites, searches, mobile mapping, alerts, import, export of calendar and contacts, quick task synchronization settings, and logout. Now, part of the difference here is we've put less stuff into the settings on the main menu and we've moved stuff into the calendar section, task list, or opportunity. So with that, one of the first things uh, I want to show you is, well, let's move to the settings. So as you can see, um, there's a lot less here in terms of going through. We still have all the details of HHG account information, startup screen, mapping. And this is an important one. Uh, this is one people usually forget. Uh, a lot of times they say, my mapping isn't working properly. And 
uh, that's because there's still some limitations to the Apple mapping. So always choose Google if you have a choice going through. And then you have your act settings, contacts. So all this stuff I'm going to go through as we go through each component separately. But you can still access everything from the, the dashboard here on the settings. So to start with, why don't we move to uh, the calendar? So here we have a calendar, just like before. Um, you go to different dates, you see all your, your activities on bottom. If we move to the filters, you can see some of the stuff here that was in our old settings. So here you have your, you, your I'm in the month view, you, I start with Sunday, my initial view is month, and then I've got my color coding here. So you can go through and you can change colors on your different activities. And the reason we've gone to the calendar is because that's where people uh, start looking for it. It's a change in terms of the way people use their devices. So again, it's very simple to use, you know, very easy to find. And again, select users at the bottom there. You can go through and then you can choose uh, any one individual or all the users just like before. So the other thing that we have added that we didn't have before is something called quick tasks. So when you go to quick tasks, and the reason for adding this is, I mean, I, I don't want to give too much credit, but I do have to give credit to Ken on this one. Uh, since he's very forgetful, uh, that's worked in our benefit. And really? the reason, <laughs> and the reason it works is because if you're out somewhere, or if you're uh, sitting around the evening relaxing, also you have a quick idea. Oh shoot, I've got to remember to do this tomorrow, or get one of my colleagues to do. What you can do here. You can add a task at the bottom. I click on the plus button, add a task. So here I will put, um, all about pro hosting. Okay, so I can do a number of things. I can send that right to act. And I have to, sorry, I have to select it first. And then I've got my menu button on the right. So here I can select a date or time, select priority, unclear task, or duplicate it. And so I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna, I won't select a date or time because I'm just gonna give Ken a call. I'm not scheduling that. So I'm gonna cancel that. Then when I click uh, send to act, I can select the user or I can assign to my record. So in this case, I'll click select user and I'm gonna put it to Ernst. So I've got to make a note of that. So I'll put it to Ernst and hit okay. And then it's gone. So it's, I don't need it on the device because it's something I'm gonna do. I'm gonna to go to act now. Now I'll open up act here. And let's go to Ernst. Let me just move my device out of the way. And we'll see which where it is under this one. Here we are. Give Ken a call about pro hosting. That's how fast it is. And this is one of the reasons that we want people to use the API is they see the power of it. Like it is instant. If I would have been slow, uh, slow in finding it here, you would have seen it's literally milliseconds and it's over. So this is the nice thing now. I've done this to, to Ernst, and so Ernst can go in there, and normally this type of message would be for myself, but this is just an example. I can go through, and I can set a time and date, and then schedule a meeting uh, with Ernst, or with myself in this case, or he would schedule with me. So again, very quick, very simple, and it's very, and the other thing you can do is right here, let's say you're, you're going out, and you wanna add a couple tasks. Uh, this is, we always laugh about this one, buy milk. And then we'll go through, add another one, buy cheese. And then I'll just leave them on here. So I can leave them on here. So later on, when I'm at the grocery store, I can go through, I can click on that one, I can buy the milk, buy cheese, and I clear the task and it's done. So you can use it as a, a note taker and reminder right on the device, or you can use it to schedule uh, reminders for yourself, 
or others uh, within the ACT database, other ACT users. So again, very simple, very easy to use, uh, but we've got, uh, for the people that have started, as you know, we've done a soft launch on this build. The people that are using it are absolutely thrilled with it. Uh, they're very, very happy with it uh, going through. Vic, can I jump in here? Because as, oh, as you mentioned, this is, uh, I was a bit of a driver behind this. So yeah. most, most iOS users are familiar with the reminders, right? So you can type in the reminders and, you know, you can often type in reminders either on your phone or your iPad, um, you know, like 10 um, reminders in the time it takes to create one activity, okay, within ACT, because you're not assigning users and, and all the other uh, parameters that you required. Um, but ACT users are, are largely task list people. So even if you look at the bottom, you'll see here that there's a task list and a calendar, both basically delivering you into, into the same, you know, activities. But ACT users, that, that's their, their big uh, um, task list. So we wanted to create something that allowed you to not only type up a lot of, of items very, very quickly, either at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, but also organize them. And what I mean by that is, let's say that you've got a project that requires five or six tasks. Uh, what you can do is actually create uh, a primary task and then create like five or six activities that are nested beneath it. Because what we've done is we've created the ability to indent these. Okay, so, you know, uh, through a little swipe like reminders that was introduced with iOS 13, you can actually create, let's say, um, the, the primary task um, is update website. Okay, and then what he'll do is you, you can create like five or six things that are related to that and then indent all of them. So all of these become child entities to the, uh, the parent activity. The beauty of that is you can either use them as kind of your own kind of uh, local project management, okay, inside the app, or you can click on them and send them all to ACT. And what the way that they will appear, I've got someone making a lot of noise in the background. Yeah, I'll um, quickly check here. Okay, the way that they will appear in ACT is that they're gonna show up as a task, but every single one of the subtasks will have a little curly brackets with the parent ID and then the description of the subtask. The beauty of that is you'll be able to click on the regarding column header and instantly group all of the the, um, the related tasks together. So that's something that we thought was was would be really really useful. You know, having the you know being able to have that simple project management. And then the last thing that we wanted to be really clear on is you can have 20, 30, 50 of these. These do not sync. Okay, these will not sync. You can send them to ACT or you completely manage them um, within this little interface as kind of your own personal scratch pad. Yeah, I said it, the scratch pad. Okay, so I just wanted to, to mention that these are features that we really, um, you know, built in to, to add it to its usefulness. Sorry, Vic, go back ahead. All right, Ken, I'm just gonna mute everybody and then just unmute you and me here. Let me just... Can, okay. Can you hear me, Ken? I can. Yes. You can hear okay, me. Yeah. Yeah. You and me are live, so I've muted everybody else. Again, if you need to speak or want to ask a question, please unmute yourself. But other than that, just leave yourselves unmute, please. All right. Thank you, Ken. So the next thing I want to show you is I'm going to jump to contacts, and we're going to add a picture in. So that's the biggest thing we got asked, and this was years ago. Uh, we have been asked many, many times, and a lot of this is for service people or real estate people when you're on the road. Example, we had um, people who were doing a lot of warranty work on home heating systems. And so they needed to go in, they need to take a picture of the, the service uh, tag on the unit itself and send it back to uh, have it in history and then send it back to the office. So here, what you can do, you can go right, contact details, go through, we go to histories. And once we're in the histories, we can add a new history, I click on the, on the plus sign, and you see in the bottom there where it says attach, I click on there, and I can take a photo, or I can select from photos, let me just select from a photo. Uh, sorry, uh, as you can see, I've got too many grandkids in my pictures here, I'll just add one of them. We'll add the size of it right away, and that way you can, you can choose uh, how much bandwidth you have, and then I click on done. So now when I go to history, and this is Gavin, 
Let's look up Gavin here in ACT. While you're looking that up, I wanted to just stress that this is only available in the API. This is not something that we could have done through Classic. Uh, just because of the way it went through middleware, there is an endpoint for these kinds of attachments. So, you know, this is something we were really happy to, to deliver. So here we are again. You saw how fast that was. It's uh, instant coming through and you just click on the photo. And there you are. Awesome. Uh, like I said, the only pictures on my phone are of, of grandkids. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving along. Um, so that's a picture transfer. So again, uh, people say, well, how can we use this? Any service workers, when you're going through and you're doing any type of warranty work, that type of thing, or real estate, if you're going through, you want to take pictures of some houses, attach them to a client, or if you just want to go through and do a quick uh, a visual of the house, you can add that in here and then sync it all back to ACT again. So the next thing I'm going to show you, let me move my screen back to the center here is I want to show you some opportunities. And there's two things I will show you here. Um, first of all, as you know, we have the um, bunch of opportunities in here. And as before, and some people uh, forget this, but let me open an opportunity here. If I click on the upper right-hand corner, you can go through. Again, you can also do quoting and invoicing uh, from handheld contact. So uh, this is a feature that we added quite a while ago, but I'm always surprised how few people, handle contact users as well as uh, resellers, know about this. So before I show you the invoice and quoting, let me show you the settings for it. So right here, you can go through, you can choose your uh, company logo, select from pictures, preview, you can remove it, your address, your sales tax number, you can also put a, a color on your label, and you can do prefixes. So all the way through, just like you can for a, a proper quotation, you can customize it however you want uh, with your disclaimer, your footer, um, email content. Uh, you can do a, a test as well. I won't uh, make a change. So this is just uh, when you send out the quote, uh, it goes through email and you can uh, send, put any notes in there. You can take sales tax in or out. And if you do it, you can also set your sales tax in Ontario here, uh, we pay 13% sales tax, so that's what I'll leave it at. But again, very simple to set up. So let me go back and then show you uh, what the quote looks like. Before it was orange, you see I changed it to green, and let me just expand that a bit. So here, before I had our sales tax number, and then you have your valid date, you can set that, how far out you want that to be valid for. And then again, it automatically calculates everything and uh, you send this to the client and then they can send it back a signed copy and then you have. So um, what uh, one company that was using this is uh, they do sales, uh, ma uh, sorry, pool, uh, pool maintenance. And so what they do is when they get there, they have the regular maintenance, but a lot of times the owner says, hey, I need something's broken here. Can you fix that? So they can do the quote. And then they can email it right to the client from here. And once the client gets it and approves it, then right away they can do the job. Oh, sorry, I, will, I won't send the email here, but this is just a test. I'll delete this draft. But then what you can do is you can go through and then you can also send the invoice. So again, the same thing. As you can see, it's very similar in look. But here you send the invoice through and it's done. Again, you hit upper right hand corner, you email it out and you're done. Uh, very, very simple to use. And this is one feature that uh, we're always surprised how, how little it gets used because it's one of the features I think that really value add to, uh, to handle contact in a big way. How few people even know about it as well. Yeah, no, it, it's, it always surprises me uh, going through. So let me just. So the other one that we can do is how many times have you wanted to, when you have five or six opportunities in ACT or 10 or 20, and you at the end of the month, and you know they're still valid, and you had them all uh, expiry date in terms of estimate close date uh, for the end of the month. So let me take a look here, and you'll see some older ones, 2015. So let me go through and just hit my up tag in the upper right hand corner of the lightning bolt, that's a tag. So I'm just gonna go through, and I'm just gonna tag tag two of them here. So then what I can do, 
oh, sorry, I can go through. And then I also uh, click on the tag. So push estimated close date. Mark is one, mark is closed, inactive, look up, clear. So I'm gonna push the estimated close date. And let me just put it to February, let's put it February 20th. Select that and continue. So now it's updated these two opportunities. So as you can see, they're closing now on the second 20th. One is for, um, let me just open for Jackie. Let's look up Jackie here quickly. And keep in mind, this is not even supported by ACT, being able to push multiple opportunities. So here goes the opportunity, and let's see what we got here. Um, got to just... I don't think you have the estimated close date highlighted. Oh, click, on op click on options. I, I just got to move my phone out of the way yeah. here. Click on okay. option in the right corner there. I don't yeah. see it. Oh, uh, sorry, my I've got a couple of menus here. Um, let me just down down on the same level as the opportunities. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I know. I had my my go to meeting menu was in the way there. Okay. Sorry. I'll customize my columns. Estimate close date. There we go. Okay, why can't I see it here? All right, oh, the there center. we go. Sorry. <laughs> um, so here we are. Now, I think this requires a sync. I think oh, yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're right. This, I, this I requires didn't... a sync. Activities, when you edit an activity or create an activity, are instantly written to the database. This requires a sync. Okay, just finished syncing. Let me just do a refresh. And they're there. And there we are, right there. Okay, so again, sorry about that. I forgot about the sync. Let me bring my phone back in. So again, very quick, very easy to use. And again, uh, you're, you're, you're hearing that out of me many times because once people use, understand that the API is so quick, so instant, it will get them more connected to ACT using it more. So this is a big thing that, that we really want to uh, focus on. So the next thing I wanna show you is our approved alerts. And one of the things we've done is improve the, the support for upcoming opportunities. So let me go to um, my dashboard and I'm gonna go to my alerts. And if I click on opportunities, here's the two opportunities uh, going through. So you wonder, well, I only see two of them there. So if you go to your dashboard and then go to your settings, if I go to my alerts right here, opportunity alerts, I max I can see out is 14 days. So again, you can make it less, uh, but I was usually put mine on max. So what I want to show you here while I'm in alerts is this is one we get uh, some call drivers once in a while, people saying, hey, I can't see my alerts. Why aren't they coming out? And we say, well, have you gone through your settings? So daily alerts, you can turn them on or off. And if you turn them on, you can set your time. I would like mine coming through at eight o'clock. And also um, upcoming alerts for, again, I always have mine at max at 14 days and opportunity alerts. So again, if you want to turn them all off, you just click there and you won't get any of them. So uh, the other, um, in terms of uh, showing you the new features, that's kind of the, the new stuff I wanna show you. Again, uh, most of you know Handle Contact, classic, and so now you can go through and you tell your clients, uh, move over to this. Uh, it's very quick, very easy to use. And as well, um, one of the things that uh, we push, and as Ken mentioned earlier, we really want to focus on people using the API. Because for us, that's the biggest, one of the bigger drives that we're pushing for retention is that the more apps we get them using with API, the more likely they are to renew and stick with handheld, hand, not just handle contact, but with ACT. Uh, that's a big thing. So, and with the improvements in the API, uh, there's a big difference in terms of the reliability. So that's one of the biggest things that we've been working with. 
as many of you know, we started way back with Book to Act as kind of a, a canary in the coal mine and uh, figuring out how the API works and what doesn't work. So as many of you know, we had many issues with it breaking uh, fairly often in the first nine, 10 months. Uh, but in the last uh, six, seven, eight months, uh, the API has been very, very stable and we're very pleased with what we're seeing out of that. Especially now that we've actually been able to support the 64-bit API, um, even with uh, all the improvements that they made prior to about a month ago, it would crash two, three times a week. And since we set up the 64-bit API and we provided the instructions to SwiftPage so they can run it both on the same machine, uh, it hasn't crashed. It hasn't crashed in a month. So, you know, not only is it better memory management, um, so it's got a much higher ceiling, we're finding it's not even using it. So a lot of the times um, we've done downloads all of 50,000 records th on three or four uh, devices concurrently, and we haven't seen it go above a gig of memory. So that's been a really, really nice improvement. And as they roll that out, that performance will be available to others as well. Um, I just wanted to quickly mention, um, because one of the things that we kind of just glossed over was that you know with this version, we've got pretty much complete feature gap closure between the classic and the API. When we circulated a, um, a survey not too long ago, that was one of the things that people said is that they'd be more comfortable promoting the API once the, the feature gap closed. So with this new version, and Vic demonstrated the, the quoting and the invoicing, but it also has mobile mapping, it has importing and exporting of contacts, importing and exporting of calendars, uh, searches and keywords. Okay, so the keyword searches uh, everyone is used to, but the, the, the the searches itself are like the de facto groups that are built around queries, okay, that you're you're able to use. And then we also brought in the favorites feature that was really popular. Sharing, that's when you go into a contact and you're able to, you know, email um, out a contact's V card or all their details, um, as well as contact copying. So, you know, almost all the features that exist in Classic have been brought over to, um, as you can see here, have been brought over to the API, um, but are now supported with many more contacts on many more devices with many more updates and much more data. So there, you know, we think that if a, there is a person that is on subscription, there's really no reason to not go with this um, based on the power of the API. And, and one other thing, as Vic said, we're learning about the API. We're learning about some of, of you know, its weaknesses. And one of the things that we discovered is that there are certain uh, weaknesses when things get deleted. So for instance, if you're in ACT um, or in hand contact and you delete an activity, as ACT likes to say, there's no endpoint for nothing. So, you know, if you delete or erase an activity um, within ACT, handheld contact can't pick it up because there's no edit, there's no nothing. So what we've done, just like we did with the contacts, um, we've got the ability to kind of download all activities every couple of days, okay? It's seamless, nothing gets lost. It's not a one-way destructive sync. Everything that's on the device that isn't on the, um, on the ACT database gets preserved, but that way we've got you know very very few discrepancies um, by implementing this workaround. So these are all little things that we've done uh, to make the experience better. Um, and then we've also got we implemented the uh, the color coding which you mentioned, um, implemented invites for activities as well as profile pictures. And one of the key developments with this is we improved the SAS compatibility. So this now works with all three levels of ACT CRM SAS. Back to you, Vic. Excellent, thank you. So um, next week when I do the public demo, please invite your clients to it, uh, as many as you can. And I will go into more detail in terms of showing some of the stuff that I didn't go through every uh, aspect of handle contact because uh, all of you are quite familiar with it. Uh, but next week I will be going into detail, more detail. I will systematically through contacts, tasks, calendar opportunities, and just show all the full functionality of it going through. So if you have customers who are new to handle contact or just are starting to look at it, or even ones that are using it but are having issues, uh, have them attend the training session because we will go through all the details. So it'll be next week will be a full hour training session. There's a couple of things I want to show you on the website here uh, going through. Uh, people say, well, what type of um, uh, version should I be using? So we have a questionnaire here. 
configurator, which HHC is right for you. So you can go through what version of ACT you have. If you have ACT Pro, um, you can click that. If a compliance, I'll say no, I'll continue. Do you require a password? No. And then right away, it, it filters over. Now, if I go back, I'll start again here. And this time I'll go pro security. I'll continue security roles. If the answer is yes, it pops me right away to my only option. And then from here, you can share that. If, so if you do this for your client, you can share it with them or they can share it with each other or with themselves. So again, it's very simple, very easy to use. Let me show you one more example in that. I'll just go back here. And I'll put Act Subscription, Hosted. I'll put Administrator, number of more than 45,000. Again, my only option is API, because remember at Classic starts at 15, and then you can upgrade to 30 and 45. If you need over 45, your only option is the API. So again, it's something that we encourage you. If, you, if you're considering, you can always give me a call, uh, but you can also go here and take a look at that. The other thing I want to show you is um, uh, comparison. So we have a comparison chart here as well. Uh, between the three, we have Handle Contact, Secure Plus, API, and Basic. So you can go through here and you can take a look, see what's um, uh, included with each of these and the pricing with them as well. So again, we've tried making it as easy as possible going through. So here again, you go to our home page and then scroll down and you see the four different versions here, go through, click on the benefits and you can go through. Again, it's one way of educating yourselves and becoming more familiar with the options are. Uh, but the key is we believe that every single person using ACT should be used. If they use the light version, uh, which we don't have listed here, but the light version is a free version. Again, it's a way to get people engaged. And once they start using the light version, they say, hey, well, I want a two-way sync because I'm emailing people, but I'm not getting record and act. Well, then they can move to the basic. Once they start moving basic, hopefully we can move them up to uh, handle contact API right here. Uh, that's the goal going through. And and one of the commercial things I want to mention is that if you, whenever someone signs up, those people get tagged to you. That's part of the sign up. They'll be uh, signed up now. Basically, you can do nothing at that point. If they pr they um, upgrade from the free version to any of the paid versions, you're going to get automatic commission for that because that's tracked on the back end. Um, but before we go any further, can you scroll up to the top and click the basic? I was multitasking. Did you really cover this in much detail? Okay, no, I so didn't cover basic in much detail. Okay, so uh, we've had a couple of questions um, within the chat channel, and I just want to explain what is behind the uh, the basic. So we're, we're obviously sensitive uh, to what's going to happen in April. We're all going to be, you know, challenged to kind of work our own support plans, our hosting, and everything else into, you know, people's ACT budget as SwiftPage consumes a larger percentage of it. So it, it would obviously be crazy for us not to introduce a value product. Now, this value product is still a billable product, so I don't want you guys to think that, oh, it's HEC Lite, there's no downloading, and there's no task list or anything. This is basically a faster, better, more immediate, uh, multi-device version of what handheld contact used to be, okay? Full contacts, full calendars, all of that, but now is available for $49.99, uh, so you could, or 50 bucks, let's call it. Um, so you can actually have one person that has four or five devices, okay, and get uh, access to their contacts, their calendars, everything, okay, for 50 bucks. Okay, imagine not so many years ago, they would spend 80 bucks and get access to one, okay, and now they're able to to access all of this information instantly. So, you know, Vic just showed you the comparison chart, but, you know, just to kind of uh, briefly glean over it, you know, it includes wireless syncing of contacts, calendars, task list notes and histories, okay? And the same notes and histories limits as you're used to with the API, okay? Um, fast setup with no computer software to install or configure. So they can do everything on their phone. All they need is their API information, their database and their login credentials, and they're ready to go. Okay, um, exports contacts to the native address book. 
we did not want to feature gate this version. Okay, that feature, I should say, because people use that in the car with their Bluetooth. So we made sure that that feature was available. Okay, so the, again, it, there's no Windows console, syncs directly with the master database, unlimited contacts and calendar items, as fast as the, the premium API. There's no throttling whatsoever. Um, sync with multiple devices, as I said, uh, has, still has the same dashboard, okay, that, um, that we've introduced with API, contact sharing, copying, alerts, favorites, tagging, invites, uh, keyword searches, not the searches like the groups, but keyword searches, along with all email, SMS, um, phones and everything tracked in history, as well as the same modern new look. Now, for people that are gonna introduce this to the customer, okay, what you can do is not unlike um, Act CRM SaaS, where the trial experience has the highest tier, this is the same. When you go for um, an API trial, um, what you're getting free is the full premium product. But at the end of their trial, when they're choosing what to subscribe to, okay, refer them back to this and they can decide, you know, what makes sense to them, okay? If they um, decide that they want to go with the, the basic, then all the premium features will be suppressed, okay, and they will carry forward. They don't need to download again. They don't need to reinstall. It's the exact same program in, feature, in a feature-gated format. Okay, and that's pretty much it. It should be, you know, much easier to sell um, having an economical option because remember, only a few years ago, this is all that they got, but at a much much slower speed with much fewer data, much less data. Now, there's one thing I do want to mention is I was just chatting with uh, Craig. Most of you know Craig, our number one uh, support for handle contact, um, and we were talking about call drivers. And the biggest call drivers we're getting on the API is what you see on your screen here, HHC account info. Um, you'd be shocked how many people sign up and 10 minutes later they forgot they put a password in. So they tried putting their password into their handheld contact. Uh, the other one is the act info. So I'm just gonna show, they have to know their uh, API address as well as their username and password for act. And again, it sounds like basic stuff, but this is our this is our biggest call driver right now is people don't know their API, their web address, their ACT username, their ACT password. So again, it's something if you're thinking of sending a client to this, if they have it, literally they will be set up and finished syncing within 10 minutes, uh, right yeah. from downloading it to actually using it, 10 minutes, no more. And it's that quick. And and I've done this a uh, number of times and I can, pro I can usually get it down even with, uh, if I'm syncing from our, our production database, I only sync uh, about 32,000 contacts, but literally within 10 minutes I'm using it. It's just very simple, very e easy to use. So as resellers, I really wanna encourage you to make sure if you're re uh, referring your clients to here or helping them set up, get this information ahead of time. Yeah, so I, just I just wanna mention that about handheld contact light. Um, you actually don't even need that. One of the things that, that people aren't aware of is that with Handheld Contact Lite, you don't need a Handheld Contact account, okay? All you need is your, your credentials. So what happens is when you sign up, you're, you're, um, you're sent a code, okay? Just obviously from a security standpoint, you're sent a code, you enter in the code, and the program is active and ready to use. All you have to do then is just enter in your API information, your database information. Nothing touches our servers okay, in terms of account requirements, and you're ready to go. So, you know, just be sure to socialize that as much as you can, because it's free. And and who doesn't want to have, you know, an instant Rolodex that they can update every single week that really has no contact limit, um, and especially if there's no cost. So everyone can get it. And you can see on the screen here, I put up handle contact light. I'm, I'm syncing 30,000 contacts to here. Again, it's any one of them you can click on, you can share it just like before. You can delete it. You can edit it. You can call. You can email, uh, SMS. So again, uh, very very cool. Uh, and again, if we can get every single Act user out there using this for free, I'm sure that it will drive business uh, your way as well with people upgrading to Handle Contact Basic or uh, API, as well as uh, again, the more you engage with the client, uh, the more uh, support. Uh, work you get with them going through and in the worst case even if they don't upgrade it's another retention tool um so you know there there's really nothing to lose by by um you know promoting this um i want let me know when you're wrapped up with the the features i want to get into some of the the future changes yeah, no I, i'm wrapped up with the features
Okay, so um, thank you for that. Um, we've been going for about 40 minutes, so I want to be respectful of time, but I want to, um, because this is a reseller call and we're not going to be putting this on our website anywhere, I want to share um, some of the plans that we've got starting April. And again, April is is quite an important month because we're all going to be, you know, working harder to keep our subscription accounts. So we want to be as as sensitive to, you know, some of, of our customers cost concerns as you guys are going to be. So one of the things that we're we're planning is changes to our support policy. Now our support policy, and this isn't a swift page support policy where we charge you more and give you less. Uh, what we're doing is we're actually going to create a bundled package that costs significantly less. So right now, just rounding up the a handle contact subscription costs $80, handle contact API, the full version. What we're gonna do is we're going to provide a bundled package where if you buy support with it, it's gonna cost you uh, 120 or $10 a month billed annually, and you get both. Okay, the exact same support that you previously got. Okay, but the only difference, the only difference, and this isn't much of a qualifier, is that it's for that that person. So in the past, we used to have people with multi seats that you know someone would pay $120 and they would call on behalf of everyone. Okay, we're going to keep that account alive for those kinds of people, that kind of support package. But you know, for people that um, are you know basically one-offs and they're the only ones that are going to be calling in for themselves we want to make it cheap and cheerful so we're going to create a bundled package of hundred and twenty dollars that gets you support okay so support and this so we think that you know going from 120 down to 40 provided it's bundled is a really really good value now if someone wants to buy it midterm okay and they obviously they can't you know just cancel their account and, and purchase it then. They can certainly get it at renewal, but if they want to add support midterm, we're making that available for 60, okay? And there's not going to be any proration. We're not going to play any of that. We're, we're already, you know, cutting the, the price by either 50% or two thirds, but, you know, they'll pay $60 and they can buy it midterm. And then at the renewal, they can renew it as a bundled package for 40. So we think that that's a really, really strong value. Uh, we don't want to be out there, you know, trying to get $120 for people to pay support for a one-off person because, you know, we just know that there isn't an infinite elasticity to people's act budget. Okay. And then the last thing is what I, what I mentioned earlier is where you've got an administrator that actually calls in on behalf of a lot of people at once. Um, we're going to keep that $120 package alive for them because that that is a good fit. Okay, so if you've got, you know, four or five people that you're you're managing and you're the administrator for, then, you know, paying $120 fee makes much more sense than, say, um, four or five individual fees. So we want to keep that alive, but we, we want to make sure that that's, you know, much more of an account-based uh, support plan than an individual-based support plan. So I hope you guys are able to promote it. All the same margins apply. There's no uh, abatements on on any of the, the wholesale costs or uh, your margins. So we're, we're trying to make this as palatable to everyone. Free packages, value packages, um, premium packages with no, um, you know, all new features and elimination of the feature gaps and more economical support plans. So we hope that you guys value some of the changes that we're making to make this easier to sell and by extension also make all of our accounts stickier. All right, Ken, we do have some questions in the chat. Okay. Um, I'll read the questions and you can respond that way. Does the example from Bud Rice, does that example with a picture hit the history list on the nav bar. History list on the nav bar. I'm not sure I understand that. What, do you, what nav bar? Are we talking about inside of Act? Inside of Act. History or the hist or the history list? Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's a history. Yeah, it's a history. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the history list is is just a um, a rendering tool, right? It doesn't actually. Um, select which um, which histories get uh, displayed without actually having applying the filters at the top. So any filters that are added get displayed. All right, and then is it possible to access custom tables using API version? No. Uh, not at this time, no. Uh, it's actually not even a roadmap item, okay? It, it's, you know, we've, we've got all kinds of, of you know, commitments and, and some very, very ambitious plans. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, the, just the, the scoping Okay, plus the, the mobile interface, custom tables is, is problematic. Okay, because 
it, it, it almost exponentially expands the, the data that would uh, require to be supported. All right, thank you. Uh, next question. Can the client sign the quote on the phone? Uh, does this invoice layout have anything to do with the template invoice and act? So um, no, they can't sign it on the phone. Uh, we're not connected to DocuSign or anything else at this point. And uh, God, does the, God no, is it? No, it's no way connected to, to the awful, horrible, please go away and never come back again quote template in Act. That is a Word Excel piece of crap that breaks if you touch it, and we have nothing to do with this. This is an HTML rendered uh, template that's easy to email out. But you know, just keep in mind that it, it is a renderer. Okay, so it's taking the opportunity details and it is rendering into one of two transactions types, an invoice or a quote. Um, you know, it, it doesn't take the place of, of you know, quote valet or, or um, you know, when you think of quote works, quote works actually works in the opposite direction. You prepare the quote and it writes to the opportunity. This is the opposite. It takes the opportunity and it renders a quote to reflect the values in that opportunity while having some additional configurable options like sales taxes and shipping and things like that. Great, thank you. And the next question is, where does the quote get saved and act? Um, the, yeah, when you send it, it becomes part of your history. Yeah, okay. yeah, great. Okay, but again, it's 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 just rendered, okay? So, you know, it's basically reflecting the opportunity information, but it will be stored as history as well. And says, so what ports does the API require? What ports? Yes. It's it's an HTTPS port. So it's, you know, anything, any, you know, all the standard uh, HTTP and HTTPS ports. Excellent, thank you. Okay, next question. For editing an activity with an ACT, does that modify the activity with an ACT API? Uh, um, it modifies it instantly in ACT. So yeah. the moment that you make an edit to an activity, just like a creation of an activity, the moment that it's saved, you're going to see a little green bar flash up at the top saying um, changes uh, saved to ACT. That's how fast it is. It's instant. Excellent. Um, unless, you're, unless you're offline, in which case it, yeah. it, it saves it for the next sync. Uh, can you have all three installed on a device at the same time? You can have yeah. two of them installed. You can have HHC HHC Lite and and your choice of handheld contact API or handheld contact um, uh, a, sorry handheld contact API and handheld contact API basic are mutually exclusive. You can't have both yeah. of them because they're the same program and it's the subscription that you select that will either expose or suppress um, the corresponding features of that subscription. Yeah, Tony, I tried getting all three on here, but uh, it didn't work for me either. <laughs> yeah. uh, have you updated the histories and notes so the case they can be edited once done or saved? Nope, we're never going to do that. And we're never going to do that for the data in integrity purposes, okay? Because inevitably there's going to be truncation of notes on the device side that we cannot get around. And as long as there's truncation, if you edit it, then that truncation gets edited back to the database. So we've just tell people it's not gonna happen. All right, thank you. And Tony asked, can you clarify how the scheduled sync works? If you saw, I just was at the dashboard, then I went to here to my menu, I went to the settings, and then I have the sync schedule. So again, you can modify it however you want, uh, have the auto sync on, and then you have your weekday, every 10 minutes, weeknights, week hours. So each of those you can edit and change as you, you see fit. And um, what we do is if you sync, if you make changes on the device, the sync is instantly back to ACT. And so what this captures is changes made in ACT coming into your device. So again, anything on the device is instant. Uh, it triggers a sync, a push, uh, but in order to pull the data, we have it scheduled here on the, um, on the we device. Sh we should also mention the difference between Android and iOS. Um, Android supports the ability to kind of run in the background, okay, um, whereas iOS, once it's, it's completely shut down, there isn't anything that can run as a service, so the program actually has to be minimized uh, with iOS to run. And so the next question is a support package for ACCs or the client? It's for the client. It's for the client, yeah. Yeah, we're, because, we're, we're, we're absolutely gonna clamp down on any resellers that are, are buying it and then using it for multiple clients. If, if you, know, you have an account 
with five or six people, like I said, and you want to purchase the $120 and call in on behalf of those people, you know, we'll support that. But the, the, we're discounting this to make it affordable to everyone, um, not to manage anything more than one customer. Okay, and the next question, is the entire picture file transferred when attaching from HHC? Yes. Yes. So, yep. so As... yeah, it, it basically you see on that the, you got the resizing on the fly. It's a resizing, it's not a cropping. Okay, um, you can imagine Vic's reaction if we cropped any of uh, pictures of his of his grandchildren. So they're they're you know they're just basically shrunk uh, shrunk down in terms of of file size. Okay, and and that's that's something that we insisted on because we know that a lot of our customers are on data plans in the field. So we don't want them taking a high resolution picture with their phone and not having any options to reduce that down. They may not need a four meg file attached to history. Okay, they might you know, be more than suitable with like a um, you know. A, a couple of hundred pixel uh, photo, but that's given to you as an option on the fly as you send. All right, next question uh, from Jenny. Will you ever allow full history without truncation? Um, I, I don't, I think there's a technical limit to that that we can do on our side. Um, but I, I mean, I'll, I'll get back to you if anything changes on that, but we've always kind of worked with that um, because we, we can't just, because there, for a lot of, there is no practical limit. What, I mean, I, I don't remember the, the character limit, but it's something obscene. Um, and we, we, kept, we had to kind of truncate it for that. But this is, you know, this is meant to provide, you know, as, as much mobile consumable data as, as possible. Um, and we're not sure we want to as aspire to it having, you know, 100% of the same uh, data uh, on the device as there is in mobile. So, yeah, I'm not sure that's something we, we want to aspire to, but, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens in time. All right, uh, two more questions. Um, uh, Michael, you asked about the large files blowing up the database, picture files. Again, as you saw when I was doing the pictures, you can choose how, how, um, this how is big shameless. you want. So you're, just, yeah. you're just accessing your photos again for your your grandchildren. No, no, I won't there's do it. No, there's no practical reason to do it. <laughs> Just do it. Um, okay, so, so Michael, the biggest thing is choose the, what size or train your clients in terms of what size. Actually, they want to actually the, why, why don't you just select a picture? We all know you want to. So just select a picture. Okay. If I could take a picture myself, I'm sure you would all. That's not going to cut the size. Okay, so here where you can see small, um, and it actually gives it in KB size because pixels are obviously difficult to translate. So we chose to go with small, medium, large, and original. Okay, so you can actually see, you know, what you're getting and what percentage of the original uh, will be sent. So in this case, um, you know, something that's 42K is, is not going to be very impactful on your data plan. Excellent. And the last question, how is the quote, quote numbering figured? Uh, I believe the quote number is, um, is sequenced, um, you know, and this is something you got to be mindful of. Okay, understand that this was kind of an adjunct, something that was added to things. So this is not like a full bore uh, quoting system. I think under the preferences, um, there is uh, some sequencing options. You know, what you can start with, I believe there's a prefix, maybe even a suffix. And, you know, on the device, it will keep track of, of those sequences. But, you know, keep in mind that it's not gonna be able to track it from device to device. So let's say that you're, you know, you're on your iPhone, and one of your other uh, sales colleagues is on another device, um, make sure that you have a prefix because they may be on, on quote number 1000. You both select quote 1001, there's no conflict resolution there. So you know, putting in a prefix of say KQ or VK, that kind of thing in front of it will eliminate that problem. But the, the sequencing is, is managed locally. And Renee, I know you're not trying to game the system, but uh, we're just watching you, okay? <laughs> Renee, what's, just... what's, what's Renee up to now? <laughs> <laughs> she, she was, she was uh, anyway, I think we answered your question, Renee. Uh, uh, we haven't uh, experienced you gaming the system yet, so I, th I think we're oh, fine. Not at all, no, she's an <laughs> excellent customer. Didn't mean in the slightest to disparage her, her fine character. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, that's it for the demo. Uh, thank everyone for attending and thanks Ken for, for pitching in here. Uh, we appreciate the business you send our way and we hope that uh, we can work together on this and then uh, build our, our, or retain more of our ACT users uh, as we have in the past. Excellent, right. thanks everyone for attending.
Thank you very much.